And now we have um, our uh, regular segment media monitor with, uh, uh, with Vladimir Yermolenko. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. And actually, what's interesting for media and Ukrainian media uh, this week um, wrote, showed us? Yeah, uh, the uh, international media, of course, worldwide are discussing, are continuing to discuss Ukrainian elections. I would like to point to an article in The Guardian, which is an editorial in The Guardian, uh, which is basically making the same estimations as before the election, saying that this is a victory of pro-Western, pro-European forces, and that not much remains, this is a quote, not much rem remains of Ukraine's old politics. Another interesting thing in this article is that uh, the, the emphasis on, uh, on, uh, uh, on a tiny result, on, on a bad result basically of far right, both far right and far left parties, both of communists and far right parties. And I think it's an interesting symptom showing that uh, basically Ukraine, um, despite the fact that this is a country at war, at a, a great tragedy, is basically Ukrainian society is not that radicalized. So all these fears that Ukrainian society will be radicalized are basically wrong. Another interesting article is, uh, was published by Die Welt, uh, which basically also shows that Ukraine is taking uh, a direction to Europe. But it's interesting, um, another point which is, which is made uh, on which we can, we can discuss here in, in Ukraine, I think it's a very interesting point that basically the article is saying that political division of the country is still strong. Well, this is kind of a debate we can, we, can, we can have here because on the one hand we can say that there is a political division indeed, but on the other hand Ukraine has never been as united and the, the, the majority of Ukrainians have never been as united as, as, as today, as now. Now, the second topic is the separatist elections, the rebel elections, which are held today. Uh, many newspapers are analyzing uh, that and just briefly saying that Süddeutsche Zeitung wrote an article uh, singing games and propaganda on these elections. Now, uh, Die Welt, also the German newspaper, uh, wrote an article uh, about separatist, uh, separatist vote. And La Libération, the French newspaper, also uh, draw attention, uh, drew attention to, to these elections. Well, and they kind of uh, making uh, um, quite a unified picture, saying that basically everybody know, knows the winner on, on these elections. And, uh, it makes a, a huge difference between these elections, separatist elections, and uh, uh, Ukrainian parliamentary election, legislative elections, in which uh, Ukrainian politics saw a real comeback of a competitive struggle. Now, the third topic, an interesting topic, is the relations between Ukraine and the West. And here are two very interesting articles, one published by Commentary magazine with the title, with a kind of a very provoking title, uh, Is Ukraine Too Pro-West for the West? And I quote, what if Kyiv simply wants to act as an independent nation pursuing its interests rather than be the messenger boy between American realists and the Putin government? This article is criticizing some, some ideas expressed in American politics, but also in European politics, that basically Ukraine should continue to, to have good relations with Russia and continue to be a bridge between the West and Russia. But this article is showing uh, and very, very makes a very good point that, that basically Ukrainians have made their choice and they made their choice uh, to pro-Western and pro-European values. So uh, another uh, interesting piece was published by Washington Post, how Putin turned Ukraine to the West. Uh, we are discussing many times in, in Western media and Ukrainian media uh, Russia's tactical victories, tactical, some tactical victories, but we forget sometimes to see that this is precisely this, uh, this attack of Russia which indeed turned Ukraine to the West, consolidated Ukraine, and um, as we said earlier, Ukraine has never been as uh, pro-Western as now. And the, the last topic is Russia and the West, and here two very interesting articles, I would like to finish with them. One, if, one is in Der Spiegel, the German newspaper, about new military doctrine. And here we are expecting a new military doctrine um, of Russia to be adopted in December, and very, uh, some very dangerous thing, things can be there. For example, the, the author who, of this article is saying that Moscow will possibly clearly name its strategic opponents or its strategic 
enemies, and it will be USA and NATO. Not only USA, but also NATO, uh, so also European countries. And the last, the last thing is a brilliant, I think it's a brilliant article by Andrei Piankovsky, who is a Russian uh, expert, politician, and, uh, and activist, um, published in Radio Liberty, on the way to the World War IV, it is called, it is in Russian. And here, a very interesting uh, metaphor, very interesting concept, Narva paradox. Basically, Piankovsky is describing this strategy of Putin to provoke West even in the NATO countries, not only in Ukraine, in Ukraine or Moldova or Georgia. So the Narva paradox, I remember the Narva is Estonian city which, uh, with a large Russian uh, minority. The Narva paradox is Putin's capacity to put with a single step the whole West before an unthinkable choice, humiliating capitulation and withdrawal from the world history or a nuclear war with a man uh, who, is, who lives in a different reality. And Pionkovsky is describing basically the, what he sees a strategy of Russia to continue to challenge the West until, until the point where the, the real confrontation is inevitable. So that's briefly it, uh, that's, that's our analysis. Uh, Media Monitor with uh, uh, Volodymyr Yarmolenko is always uh, brilliant, thanks a lot.